What's good, YouTube? This is RTFYTS Gaming back at it again with another video. Today, we got Warlong Fallen Dynasty Top 3 Overpowered Builds. Let's get right into it. You already know we got the Goat Cold Boy. You about to show us what the builds are. Three of these builds are capable of destroying every enemy and every boss, with each build offering its own playstyle, weapon, and status effect. Wolong's first DLC is expected to release in June, and I highly advise making several powerful builds that you can cycle through depending on the weaknesses of the enemies and bosses you are fighting. Will you choose the Grandmaster Water build that utilizes one of the most powerful gear sets, amplifying your attack power and ice elemental abilities? Or perhaps fire best suits your playstyle, allowing you to scorch your surroundings and melt enemy spirit bars? Or maybe controlling lightning isn't such a bad choice since it crushes enemy spirit bars and works extremely well when combined with the staff's quick and deadly melee attacks. The choice is yours. Well, while we have a break in action, let me ask you guys, what is your favorite build in the game? Put like, put it in the comment section and let me know. My favorite build is ice. Second favorite build is fire. But, there's a but. I'm working on this hybrid fire toxin build. And so far, I'm liking it. So, what about you guys? What's your favorite build? And, if you enjoyed this game, make sure you hit that like button. Because, I'm definitely going to be cranking out content for this game. Reactions, custom content, you name it. I'm just starting off with the reactions right now. Let's get into it. The first build on this list is the Grandmaster Water build. Some highlights on this build include 131 ice attack power, 20% extra weapon damage in perfect condition, A- ice attack power damage bonus on the forged sabers, 10% extra element imbued weapon damage, and 12% negative effect duration on enemies. This build contains a gear set called the Grace of Taiho, the Azure Emperor, which unlocks a powerful 5-piece bonus called Subtlety of Wood Phase. This positive effect is activated after successfully deflecting a critical attack and cannot be removed. This permanent buff increases HP damage dealt and normal attack spirit gain and also reduces HP damage received. The water virtue affects how easily enemies can detect you, making you feel invisible, opening up the opportunity for lethal fatal strikes. Investing in the water virtue will increase your HP, ranged attack power, stealth, and deflection difficulty. As you increase the water virtue, the amount of damage and chill effect that you inflict with ice-based attacks will increase. Guys, quick side note. Why is this version of Lubu, to me anyway, a lot more easier than the first time you come across them? I found that kind of strange. Let me know your experience in the comment section. You can see here my character is level 150 and the main virtues to focus on for this build is the wood virtue and the water virtue. The wood virtue affects HP and the amount of spirit lost when attacked and it also affects spell duration. But most importantly, you need at least 70 wood virtue to activate the most powerful ability on this build, Subtlety of Wood Phase. The Water Virtue affects how easily enemies can detect you and the amount of spirit consumed when deflecting. On this build, I have 70 Wood Virtue, 8 Fire Virtue, so I can use the Amplify Damage spell, and 74 Water Virtue. For the special effects on the build, you can see here plus 131 Ice Attack Power. Keep in mind, this increases Ice Damage, but it also increases Status Effect Accumulation. We can also reach a maximum of 21.7% extra weapon damage at perfect condition on this build using this gear set. I also added 10% extra element imbued weapon damage and on the forged sabers here you can see A- minus damage bonus for ice attack power. This increases HP damage dealt in proportion to your ice attack power. 
24.5% chill accumulation on enemies. Honestly, you don't need any more than 24.5%. The higher your ice attack power, the quicker the status effect accumulation is going to be. And lastly here, 11.5% negative effect duration on enemies. The main weapon and the first piece of the grace of Taiho, the Azure Emperor, is the 100 forged sabers. 5 star rank, fully upgraded, plus 9. You can see 567 attack power. For the scaling below, you can see here these weapons heavily favor the earth and water virtues. Also, the best martial arts combination you can have in the game for dual swords is Sudden Tornado and Thorn Prick. With Sudden Tornado, you jump forward and then perform a spinning attack. If you follow up with Thorn Prick, you unleash a barrage of rapid thrusts. For the special effects below here, you can see A- damage bonus for ice attack power. Again, this increases HP damage dealt in proportion to your ice attack power. Plus 19 ice attack power and spirit vulnerability to a target upon a successful martial arts hit. This is a great combination because you're essentially increasing your spirit damage and overall attack power. If we take a closer look at the grace set here, you can see Grace of Taiho, the Azure Emperor. As long as you have five pieces on your build that are embedded with this grace, you can achieve 2.4% HP restoration, negative 2.5% spirit consumption of the wood phase spells, Damage amplification to enemies when landing a fatal strike. This one here is great to have 10.5% extra HP damage dealt when at full HP. And last but not least, the best part of this grace set, subtlety of wood phase. Requires a wood virtue value of 70 or greater to activate. When you successfully deflect a critical blow, you will gain subtlety of wood phase. This positive effect is permanent and cannot be removed. Increases HP damage dealt and normal attack spirit gain, and also reduces HP damage received. I highly recommend using a bow on your water build just because this bow, specifically the Feathered Calvary Bow, you can see here rank four plus nine, has 552 attack power on this build because it scales so well with the water virtue. An okay. extra tip, you can add extra ice attack power on your build by embedding that stat to your ranged weapon. For the helmet, I have a five star Wuhan Calvary hat, plus eight, 105 defense. For the special effects below, you can see here plus 19 ice attack power, plus 8.2% chill accumulation on enemies, plus 3.3% element imbued weapon damage, and damage amplification to targets that a wizardry spell hits. For the chest piece, a five star entertainer guard How plus nine fully that? upgraded, 131 Grand defense. For, for the days. special effects below, you can see here plus 19 attack power, plus 3.4% element imbued weapon damage, plus 2.9% negative effect duration on enemies, and plus 8% chill accumulation on enemies. For the glove, I don't know the drop rate for the entertainer stuff, but I've been grinding for days to get this five star entertainer. T entertainment bracelets and all that i've been going to fair the entertainer just going back and forth back and forth this is something i'm missing my luck is of at 200 five star entertainer bracelets <laughs> plus crazy. eight 72 defense for the special effects below i like this one here applies power gain to the user upon successfully deflecting a critical blow plus 3.4 percent element imbued weapon damage plus 19 ice attack power plus 2.8 percent negative effect duration on enemies and last but not least five star lieutenant general greaves plus nine fully upgraded 198 defense and for the special effects below plus 3.5 percent water damage plus 8.3 percent chill accumulation on enemies plus 19 ice attack power and plus 2.9 percent negative effect duration on enemies Another great thing about these greaves, we get set bonus requirement mitigation. So the set bonus can be activated with one fewer piece of equipment. Keep in mind this effect does not stack. For the accessories, look for any accessories that give you extra ice attack power, water damage, and even equipment drop rate. The first spell that I'm using on this build, which actually requires 15 morale to activate, it's that strong, is Ominous Chill. Summon small icicles to continuously fall on the lockdown target or on a point at a certain distance to the front. Next, we have Ice Weapon. For a certain period of time, enchant your current melee weapon with ice. You could replace this spell and add Ice Enchant to your dual swords, but honestly, the Ice Weapon status effect accumulation is a lot faster. A really good movement-based spell, Aqua Blink, 
which allows you to instantly teleport a certain distance. You can actually teleport behind enemies when you use this spell. And the last spell here, Amplify Damage for a certain period of time increases both the damage you deal to enemies and receive from them. So it's a double-edged sword, but keep in mind your melee attacks and your spells are going to do more damage. The next build on the list is the Grandmaster Fire Build. A perfect choice for any player that wants to utilize the strongest fire spells and abilities in Wolong Fallen Dynasty. Some highlights on this build include 150 flame attack power, 10% extra element imbued spirit damage, and A- spirit damage bonus for flame attack power. This build works incredible on bosses and difficult enemies since breaking their spirit is the main priority. The more spirit damage you do, the more opportunities you have for fatal strikes and big damage. The gear set we are using on this build is the Grace of Deity Tianzun the Pure One, which contains a powerful ability called Principle of Lingbao. After successfully deflecting an attack, you gain five stacks of Principle of Lingbao, which increases HP damage dealt and normal damage. This gear set is great because it's so effortless to activate, and it's the main reason why this fire build is so strong. That principle of Ling Bao, that gear is crazy. I'm just missing the headpiece. Why do motherfuckers continue to yell when I'm trying to fucking work? You can see here my character is level 150 and the main stats to focus on for the Grandmaster Fire build is the Wood Virtue and the Fire Virtue. The Wood Virtue affects HP and the amount of spirit lost when attacked and the Fire Virtue affects the amount of spirit gained when attacking and the amount of spirit consumed by martial he arts. On this build you can see I have 43 Wood Virtue and max 99 Fire Virtue. If you look to the bottom right here, you can see 444 fire elemental attack power. This is the reason why this build is so effective. Some highlights of this build include Holy 150 sheesh. flame attack power. Again, this increases flame damage and status effect accumulation. 8% extra element imbued weapon spirit damage and A- spirit damage bonus on our iron sword, which increases spirit damage dealt in proportion to our flame attack power. I also have HP restoration from wizardry spell damage. Now this is good to combine with the absorb vitality spell, which you have access to since the wood virtue is one of your main virtues. It's a really easy way to regenerate your health in battle. The main weapon on this build is a five star iron sword plus nine fully upgraded. And with the stats that I have on this build, you can see we were able to achieve 600 attack power this weapon is a great choice Almost because it scales mic. so well with the fire and wood virtue for the martial arts special effects i have gouging star and whirlwind advance for the special effects below here you can see a minus spirit damage bonus for flame attack power which increases spirit damage dealt in proportion to our 150 flame attack power this pairs very nicely with the spirit vulnerability that we can apply to enemies upon a successful martial arts hit plus 19 flame attack power. And like I said, this weapon is the first piece of the Grace of Deity Tianzun, the Pure One gear set. If you find five pieces of gear that are embedded with this Grace set, you will gain access to five special bonuses. The first one being negative 2.5% deflect spirit consumption. Next, we can also achieve haste upon deflecting, which increases our movement speed, plus 4.6% spirit gain from deflecting, damage amplification to a target upon a successful deflecting counterattack, and the last one here the best bonus for this gear set is the principle of deity which gives us access to principle of ling bao when you successfully deflect an attack you will gain up to five stacks of this ability 
each stack increases HP damage dealt and normal attack spirit gain. You can see on this build, I have two iron swords just to help me achieve that five piece bonus. For the bow, I'm using a four star flying general's bow, 519 attack power. What's great about this choice here, it scales very well with the fire virtue. You can see here A plus scaling. The bow is also a great way to add more buffs to your build. If you look below here, plus 17 flame attack power, plus 3% negative effect duration on enemies, plus 5.6% enemy status effect accumulation, and also enemy detection. For the helmet, I have a five star Taishin Bandit Bandana plus nine, 97 defense. And if we look at the special effects below, you can see plus 3.6% martial arts damage, damage amplification to a target that a wizard respell hits, plus 19 flame attack power, 8% extra burn accumulation on enemies, and plus 2.8% negative effect duration on enemies. This piece also has set bonus requirement mitigation, which allows you to achieve a set bonus with one fewer piece of equipment. For the chest piece, I have a five star Shan Yu soldier guard plus seven, 106 defense. And for the special effects below, you can see plus 4% spirit gain from deflecting, plus 4% element imbued weapon damage, plus 2.9% negative effect duration on enemies, plus 19 flame attack power, and 8.2% extra burn accumulation on enemies. For the gloves, five star giant wrestler gauntlets, plus eight, 120 defense. For the special effects below, plus six spirit attack when guarding, plus 4% element imbued weapon spirit damage, plus 8.1% burn accumulation on enemies, plus 19 flame attack power, power gain to the user upon successfully deflecting a critical blow. And last but not least here, five star white horse general greaves plus eight, 170 defense for the special effects below plus 4.3 percent martial arts spirit damage plus 19 flame attack power plus 8.2 percent burn accumulation on enemies plus 2.8 percent negative effect duration on enemies and 3.3 percent extra spirit gain from deflecting the first spell i'm using is fire blast discharges a ball of fire that flies on a gravitational arc and explodes upon hitting an enemy or terrain the reason why this spell is such a great choice it requires zero morale to activate it's quick and the burn status effect accumulation is actually very fast. Next, we have okay. flame weapon for a certain period of time and chance your current melee weapon with flame. Now, similar to the build that we looked at earlier, you can apply flame enchant to your weapon, but I find that the flame weapon spells just have a faster status effect accumulation overall. Next, burn. Don't mean to cut them off, but if you made this far into the video, you are a real one. I know it's a little bit longer reaction than I'm used to doing. Make sure you subscribe if you are new and make sure you hit that like button. Burning Flame Wave, one of my favorite spells to use in this game, summons continuous eddies of flame in front of you. This deals damage over time to any enemies that come in contact with it. And the last spell here, Amplify Damage for a certain period of time, increases both the damage you deal to enemies and receive from them. This applies to your melee attacks, your spells, and appears very nicely with the principle of Ling Bao. The last build on the list is the Grandmaster Lightning build. This is one of my Grand favorite builds to use in Wolong Fallen Dynasty because the lightning abilities in this game don't just look cool, they melt enemy spirit bars. Also, I really enjoy the moveset of the staffs and the reach advantage it offers in combat. Some highlights of this build include 150 lightning attack power, 13% element imbued weapon damage, A minus spirit damage bonus for lightning attack power, and 33% shock accumulation on enemies. The wood virtue is the main virtue on this build, which is great because the wood phase offers many spells that can help increase your survivability. The gear set that I'm using on this build is called the Great Talent of a king's advisor which increases our elemental imbued weapon damage by 14 percent and also provides health regeneration upon fatal strikes
You very patient. The two main virtues to focus on for this build is the wood virtue and the metal virtue. Again, the wood virtue affects HP and the amount of spirit lost when attacked. And this is the primary virtue that our staff skills with, as well as metal virtue, which affects the duration that a high level of spirit can be maintained for and the spirit consumed by wizardry spells. Some highlights okay. of this build include 130 lightning attack power, 26.5% element imbued weapon damage, a minus spirit damage bonus for lightning attack power, 32.6% shock accumulation on enemies, and almost 15% negative effect duration on enemies. For the weapons, I have the Saint's Virtue, but the main weapon on this build is the four star white wooden cudgel plus eight with 538 attack power. If you look at the scaling here, it heavily favors wood and metal, which is the two virtues that we are mainly focusing on. For the martial arts special effects, I have Dragon Flash and Falcon Strike. And for the effects below, you can see plus 3.5% spirit gain from normal attacks, A minus spirit damage bonus for lightning attack power, plus 19 lightning attack power, and we can also negate attribute damage upon guarding successfully. I have the Saint's Virtue as my secondary weapon, so I can activate the gear set called the Great Talent of a King's Advisor. These special effects below are great and they work incredible with this lightning build. Plus 6.4% Genuine Chi of Tension, 1.9% HP Restoration, plus 4.1% Positive Effect Duration, also Regeneration to the user upon a successful Fatal Strike. This pairs very well with the Absorb Vitality spell in the Wood Phase. And last but not least, an extra 13.6% element imbued weapon damage. For the helmet, I have a five star perfect shoe and hat plus eight 75 defense. And for the special effects below, you can see damage amplification to a target that a wizardry spell hits plus 3.3% element imbued weapon damage, 8.1% shock accumulation on enemies, plus 19 lightning attack power, plus 2.9% negative effect duration on enemies. For the chest piece, a four star perfect shoe and silk garb fully upgraded plus nine 145 defense for the special effects below plus 8.3 percent shock accumulation plus 3.1 percent element imbued weapon damage plus 18 lightning attack power and 2.8 percent extra negative effect duration on enemies for the gloves perfect shoe and gloves plus nine 83 defense for the special effects below we get damage amplification to an enemy upon successfully deflecting a critical blow plus 19 lightning attack power, 3.4% element imbued weapon damage, 7.9% shock accumulation, and 2.9% negative effect duration on enemies. And lastly, four star soldier footwear, plus seven, 116 defense. For the stats below here, we get negative 4.6% spirit damage received when at full HP, plus 19 lightning attack power, 3.1% element imbued weapon damage, and 8.3% shock accumulation on enemies. The first spell I'm using on this build is Absorb Vitality, which pairs very well with the perfect shoe and gear set. We get health regeneration from the set and additional HP restoration from this spell. You and your nearby allies can restore HP upon dealing damage to enemies. Next, we have Lightning Weapon, which allows us to enchant our staff with lightning. Next, one of my favorite lightning spells. It's very quick. It has very fast status effect buildup lightning rush which hurls a lightning bolt that rushes forward easy way to reach your target and it's an easy way to do damage to an enemy spirit bar and last but not least amplify damage for a certain period of time increases both the damage you deal to enemies and receive from them like i mentioned earlier this applies to your melee attacks and your spells thank you all so much for watching the video yeah. if you enjoyed this video in any way shape or form a thumbs up would be very much appreciated it really helps the channel grow and it's going to help recommend this video to other players that may need it if you want to see more wool long fall wrap it up here guys i would like to say if you heard any background noise i would like to apologize I uh, people just don't know how to turn their shit down but other than that catch you guys on the next wool long falling dynasty video Peace.